Good evening. It's been a hell of a week in politics and uh, things are going all over the place at the moment. And um, several things are happening within the heart of power and government. There is a pull happening, a division, a splitting, if you like, of a, an underlying problem or complex within the nation. And um, uh, I'd like to explore, go back a bit to basics again, to explore the 1066 chart, and particularly this transit of Neptune opposed Saturn, to get an idea of what the astrological pointers are, um, uh, are indicating. But I was drawn to um, do this uh, video at the moment, and I'm going to do two. I've done a, a chart of the uh, amendment, what I've called the No Deal Amendment vote, which was um, uh, brought in. It's going to be supposedly passed by the House of Lords today and then um, sent to, for, the, for the Queen's approval on Monday. This is a great defeat for the government and uh, a great... Um, uh, uh, success or, or victory for what you might call parliamentary sovereignty, as opposed to a defeat for national sovereignty. Um, I've been looking into this matter in a historical context and um, also a psychological one, looking at the astrology as well, of course, um, um, to, to see what it has to say beneath the waves of the surface of experience. Um, but I, for those so interested in this subject, I could wholeheartedly recommend Dr. David Starkey. Um, he's uh, one of the great uh, eminent historians of the 21st and 20th century, in the late 20th century, and he's also one of the great communicators. Uh, a sense of realism uh, and a sense of he evokes a, a a great sense of history and what it was about in the movement of uh, civilization and the progress of different national identities here and abroad, particularly of course his work with the um, the kings and queens of England. He offers us a great insight and he refers to all of this stuff as very similar to King Henry VIII separating or attempting to separate from Rome uh, back in the period of the Reformation. So I would urge you to look at that because he, he um, describes the difference between parliamentary sovereignty and national sovereignty. And he believes that it was King Henry VIII that at first tried to negotiate with uh, Rome. Uh, and uh, in many ways, he draws a parallel between um, Henry VIII's first uh, attempt at doing it and, um, and Theresa May, who tried to appease and went along and got a kind of compromise that uh, uh, tried to, um, tried to uh, bring these two halves together, this split, uh, but really um, promised uh, promised everything to everybody and nothing to no one. Um, a, a kind of a, a real attempt to bring things together, a genuine attempt, uh, which was um, seen off in the House of Commons. So anyway, Dr. David Starkey, I think, offers a great historical perspective and a much better one than I could ever do. Although I think the parallels there are, are, are relevant today because that was Theresa May. But then he, King Henry VIII moved over into a different kind of negotiation. He's starting to take back control and uh, through uh, different, different means uh, and uh, decided against Cardinal Wolseley's attempt to uh, really create this continuation uh, with the Church of Rome and then he decided to get rid of him. Um, and so we see this shift, this attempt to strong arm Parliament yet again into a specific national sovereignty vote, which was voted in on the ref uh, at the referendum, which is at the, at the moment being undermined by Parliament. Parliament seeing itself as sovereign, as the main thing, as opposed to the national sovereignty of a national vote. Now, um, I could go into the, the, the fact of the referendum and what um, David Cameron said about leaving, about leaving on WTO rules and when we're out, we're out. I have several quotes here. For example, he said, if we leave, if we vote leave, we will revert to WTO rules at the end of a two year negotiation period. I'm delighted to be carrying out the instructions of the British people. 
and we only get, note this, one vote. We only get one vote, he said. This is a vital decision. And as, a, as politicians, we have to respect the will of the people, as we will in this referendum. I looked back to his, some of his interviews, Faisal Islam interview in particular, uh, around about uh, when, when we were undergoing the referendum. Those are very clear statements about what would happen if we left Europe. And it's very, very clear on that, that there's no, it's nothing about a deal. There's about negotiations, but not a deal, not a, uh, a, a withdrawal agreement as such. And everybody um, uh, signed up to Article 50, which meant that we would be leaving. This has subsequently been um, debased. It has been uh, changed. It has been altered. It has been kicked down the road. And now we see it being kicked down a road again. Now, when I'm saying these things, I don't know, and I have no really large-scale political awareness of what is actually best, leave or stay, um, and so on. But all I know here is that these two forces, these two very powerful elements in the psyche of your nation are being split apart. And when anything is being split apart like this, dangers follow. So what I'm going to do now next, so I'm going to look on the UK 60, 1066 chart to see what is happening on it. Okay, well, I hope you now can all see this chart, which we have seen before. I did a video uh, some time ago called England is Leaking. And I was uh, moved to do that video because of the Neptune opposite to Saturn when the, uh, then there was a leaks in the House of Parliament and rain stopped play, as it were. And I was taking that as a symbol of something seeping into the power. And I proved that chart too several times over looking at various important transits of this, chart, of this English chart. This uh, England of 1066 came into being and um, so I was trying to prove it, trying to look at it. And uh, you may have noted or remembered that when Neptune, Neptune is here at 17 degrees opposite this Saturn. And uh, the last time it was opposite to this Saturn, one of the big events in London was the outbreak of cholera. And you can clearly see here dirty water, um, uh, Saturn in the sixth house of sickness and Neptune as water and this kind of poisoning, the undermining of 12th house elements coming into things, uh, coming into the sewerage system or through the sewerage system and uh, then poisoning everybody. Um, that was a serious thing, and uh, what we have here uh, now in the present day is this same Neptune opposition to Saturn. Saturn, as you can see here, with its rules and regulations, its civil service, sixth house servant, um, uh, it, 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 it likes its rules. It likes its stability. It is the ruler of the 10th house of government. It rules the sun and Mercury. And it has a very, very nice trine here to this Mercury. It's making things secure in an ordered fashion. I've pointed out before many times about the self-sufficiency, the um, this sense of self-sufficiency of, of Saturn, feeling that it's an island mentality. And here is the island, this grand trine here in earth science, a, a symbol of self-sufficiency, practical self-sufficiency, and a, a, a need to determine its own course. This is very powerfully uh, present in the psyche of the English national identity. But as I've also pointed out in these videos, this is not just about national sovereignty. It is about why, where we want to go next. Do we want to give that up or sacrifice that or move on into a greater organization, into a Neptunian organization? Because what Neptune offers, it not only breaks down the boundaries of the ordinary, and here we have these people on the, the, the Saturn side, fear a kind of engulfment from the EU. Um, because I've often referred to Neptune as a, a general sense of merging or f not integration, as they call it integration, but it's a merging. It's a, it's a, a softening of the individual self, the individual boundaries of the ego into a greater unity. Um, this green sees Neptune very much as the, um, 
as the offer of redemption, uh, the need to move beyond the sufferings of independent identity and ego and body and material stuff, and then move into a, a kind of redemptive state, of, a transformed state of um, uh, uh, ultimate being saved in some way. Yes, this can come in the form of a religion or even or an ideology or indeed in the form of some political union. Now, I'm not saying that this is false either. I don't really know, but I'm just trying to little look here at the dynamics involved. See, very interestingly, that Neptune is in Taurus, which is a kind of saviour through monetary union. And uh, Taurus also is the sign of Europe, because Europa the bull and so on. And I've covered this in other videos. Very interesting that the Neptune here is conjunction, the moon, the 24 Taurus of the Maastricht Treaty chart, in which everything starts to become much more ideological in terms of a, uh, the ideological dream of uh, Europe to be a, a more cohesive, unitary, unitary financial body. So we can take some of the symbolism here that Neptune represents that. There's always a bit of an opposition between Neptune and Saturn. Saturn wants its own way, self-definitions, boundaries, independent existence. Neptune wants to belong to something greater. And always a sacrifice is involved in some way. So when Neptune is in transit, it brings along a kind of dream to be saved, to be pulled into a, a, more, um, a more involved, absorbed state of ecstasy of some kind, a, a pull towards greater safety. And I have a feeling that those people involved in the European project wanting to save us from future wars and also to save us in terms of um, being a, 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 a trading block uh, in comparison to the large trading blocks of the world that are going on and forming so that we can hold our own against them. Whereas the, uh, to uh, those belonging to the Saturn side, um, the, the feeling of a certain security in national identity, of not being uh, swamped by forces that we have no control over and so on, they see Neptune here as the great fish, Ichthys, who, who, who comes along with his jaws and swallows us up and somehow that we are no longer an independent entity. This is uh, being played out, I think, here in the political sphere and uh, to do with those people that feel Saturn is being swamped up, a tidal wave is coming across, and these Neptunian uh, ideology here of um, greater integration, greater fusion and safety. I believe they be think that the political project of Europe is some kind of magnificent saviour to us all. And as such, uh, the end justifies the means. That is often the case, unfortunately, with ideologies that you can get into some terrible trouble, terrible uh, waters and end up doing things that... Um, uh, that you really didn't want to do, but you convince yourself that the end, the end result justifies the means. Interestingly enough, today, uh, uh, Robert Mugabe, who started off as the saviour of a nation, uh, saviour of his people who fought, the, uh, fought against uh, the, uh, over, the, the rule of a uh, he, he succumbed to uh, problems, too, of holding on and cling, uh, clinging on to power. There are some dangers here. Because if this opposition is fighting in two opposite camps, the people on this side feel that they will be absolutely absorbed or swamped or drowned under, the, uh, uh, under this wave, this tidal wave of greater fusion with everybody else. And it will result in some kind of ego deterioration and may even result in delusions of some kind which have an outbreak on a global scale. I believe if, the, this, if this situation is not resolved, we are headed for some kind of almost a cultural or collective schizophrenia of some kind, which results in a loss of reality because the opposites cannot be held. 
Now, when I look uh, uh, in some people, so the the conclusion uh, I arrive at is that both of these have to be held, and that at present, no matter which one supposedly wins, uh, in the in in time, as the orrery on the uh, Brexit um, that I did last time, in time a unifying symbol will be found in order to conjoin and uh, to join these forces together. So the problem with Neptune is there's too much flooding that the individual identity is uh, starts to, uh, to to fade away, um, almost like something being um, just slowly soaked, and it it, uh, it it feels as if it's falling apart. Whereas the Neptunian people uh, uh, fear this great isolationism of independent existence and national identity as some form of archaic problem that needs to be moved on from. So this is to do with monarchy, individual identity versus the redemption of the nation through a greater involvement with a larger mass. This is the separation out, and at the moment, they're still in two opposing camps. So what I would say to anybody listening worried about this tension, you can have your choices of which you think is the best, whether you think uh, Brexit is best or whether you think uh, destroying that vote is best. Uh, you think I'm fairly clear on the fact that, although I don't know the politically best option, I feel that the way and the manner in which we are being forced to do things is highly suspect indeed. And it's the way that things are done that I have an argument rather than what has been done. So we should have had a better argument a few years ago. Perhaps we should have had better politicians. Some people in the alternative media pointed out this argument or that argument, but we have been let down by the caliber or lack of caliber of politicians who simply wanted to serve their own interests first or their own ideologies and have walked into territory here that seems rather delusional and absurd. It is really an outrage that um, people are saying the narrative that has been for the last two or three years that we didn't know what we were voting for is clearly not true given the Cameron quotes and what he said um, uh, during the referendum campaign. Why was there so many uh, uh, negatives about leaving? Because those might be well be true. He wanted to emphasize those. Uh, I don't think there was uh, any particular overemphasis that they would have done to try and prove their point. World War Three was going to break out again, and so perhaps that was a bit of an overemphasis. But the um, the Leave side too said there will be no trouble with leaving. We'll get to, we'll get things. So there were machinations on both sides to try and persuade. But what we didn't get was a true discrimination of the results of both things and what they would actually mean. Two intent, I think, two entrenched camps trying to point their point of view without actually taking the rest of us along with them, leaving us, of course, to do our own homework, of which uh, uh, there's uh, plenty of material online for people to find out if they wanted to make up their own mind. But Cameron was clear. The narrative was clear. The choice was clear. And to gloss over this fact with um, uh, false narratives that have built up in order to prevent the national will of uh, uh, the people is what I am troubled with. Maybe they've got it right. Maybe it's best that we, we leave it and we move further in. But you don't do that by covering over by deception, by false motives, false narratives, and scare tactics. Anyway, let me just come out of there. In our own individual lives, as if this was a chart of a client, I would be saying, loosen up a bit. Certain things, certain things above you are trying to come through you. You're acting as a channel. When Neptune opposes Sun, there's something of the individual will which is being taken into a, um, a, a process of transformation by forces beyond them. 
but we don't give up our individual will or our independent identity just because we're being used as a channel. So if, a, if it was an individual, it's about loosening our defenses, not being, we can have our preferences, but we don't have to anchor us, our total soul, our total identity and sense of survival in one camp or another. It's a question of holding both sides in the tensions of which Jung said, when you do this for long enough, eventually a reconciling symbol or event or um, situation will present itself in order to bring both sides together. I would refer you to my last uh, video on the uh, horary Brexit uh, to see when this is it will be, and it will probably be within 17 months or so uh, from now to do with the perfections of the moon uh, right up to the sun. Okay, well, uh, thank you for now. I'm going to also do the amendment vote chart, which I found also interesting, um, uh, but I'll do that on another video. Cheerio for now.